Welcome back to The Real Story. I'm Matt Karen. There's been a lot of challenges in Connecticut's long-term care facilities when it comes to COVID-19, but there's also been a lot of successes. And here to talk with us about the battle still ahead is Matt Barrett of the Connecticut Association of Healthcare Facilities. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. It's good to be with you, Matt. So I want to jump right in. Uh, there are going to be four bills dealt with in a special session of the legislature coming up uh, in July later this month. But one of those issues that's not being addressed that a lot of people think should have been tackled is uh, the nursing homes. Do you think that that should have been included in a special session? I think it still is under discussion for a September uh, special session of the legislature. and. But, uh, but I think there is sufficient authority under the governor's executive authority uh, power at this moment in time and into the foreseeable future to address any underlying issues that are existing for skilled nursing facilities. So no, I don't just see, it, see it as a major setback that they're not considering nursing home issues in the special session. And Matt, uh, Governor Lamont, as you mentioned, did sign an executive order mandating nursing home testing once a week. And then he scaled it back just days later, saying that uh, they can stop doing that if a facility is COVID-19 free uh, for 19 days. Uh, that may have been a prudent fiscal decision, but in your view, was it the right public health decision? Well, I don't believe that it was made for fiscal reasons in any of the conversations I've had with officials from the Connecticut Department of Health. The issue of the cost related to the test was never entered into the conversation or into the calculus. And though, while nursing facility testing is very expensive, a typical nursing facility could experience as much as $25,000 a week in testing costs, $100,000 a month, those are unsustainable costs uh, that could never be borne in a sustainable way by Connecticut nursing facilities. But notwithstanding those costs, it's never entered into the public health conversation uh, that I'm aware of. And so uh, uh, the representatives of the Connecticut Department have explained to our industry that the decision to uh, it was not one that scaled it back, but was one that aligned it with CDC uh, guidelines and that, that it is informed by public health science that says that if you, your facility goes a 14-day period, epidemiologists have explained to us that that is a full, uh, a full incubation cycle of the COVID-19 virus and that you are observed for an additional 14 days and go a full 28 period, then your building is COVID free. And after the first 14 days, you can discontinue testing. We're following Matt, the advice. Go ahead, Matt. So, so I was gonna say though, if you're, if you're not doing the weekly testing and it's not mandatory, then how are you gonna catch that asymptomatic transmission, which is what set the nursing homes on fire in the first place? Well, I think uh, the epidemiologists have explained to us that th there, there, there's, no, there's not a zero risk uh, regarding catching the epidemia, uh, uh, the asymptomatic carrier, but the risk becomes very acceptable in terms of uh, uh, the medical evidence that it's a nominal risk and that it's ex ex that uh, and that that's acceptable. But listen, be clear, we will follow the guidance of the Connecticut Department of Public Health and the CDC, whatever it is re regarding uh, testing. If that changes, and uh, one of the issues related to COVID-19 in Connecticut is as guidance has changed, if this guidance were to change and say that a 14-day 14 incub incubation period is not satisfactory, and that we should test uh, weekly without regard to uh, whether or not you go through a full inc uh, incubation period, then that's what Connecticut nursing homes would do. But that's okay. not the guidance today. Yeah, and do you agree with the governor's decision to hire an independent uh, firm to investigate the response of long-term care facilities to this crisis? I do. I think that it was an important decision. I'm glad he made it weeks ago and he did implement a sort of fast-tracked uh, request for proposal uh, uh, process 
and announced a, uh, a contractor, Mathematica, to conduct that review. Uh, the governor has characterized it as a 360 degree re review. It will evaluate what Connecticut nursing facilities did or didn't do, and it would also evaluate uh, the state actors. It'll evaluate the state's response and maybe even the federal government's response. And we'll have a good look at what went right, what went wrong, and, and that's proper, uh, uh, really essential as we're starting to prepare for uh, the potential resurgence of the virus in the fall. And Matt, there's been a push uh, during some sessions of the legislature for accountability when it comes to nursing homes, specifically in the form of camera feeds from some of the residents' rooms uh, to family members at home. Are you in favor of that kind of transparency? I think a lot more work needs to be done uh, uh, in terms of addressing the full range of issues that arise when you're talking about uh, invading the privacy of nursing facility residents or perhaps their roommates or employees. And so it's, 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 it's an, an issue that we're willing to work on. But I think that there's a whole range of issues that need to be addressed in, in order for, uh, for us to move forward with a responsible bill that puts video cameras in, uh, 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 and videotaping the most sensitive situations uh, for nursing home residents. And so okay. I, I, uh, I think it's, a, it, it's an issue that requires a lot more evaluation and work and one where the legislature should really be in full session and have a full process before they move forward with a legislation of that nature. Now, let's talk about PPE for a second. Uh, Connecticut has about a 60-day stockpile, although the state is trying to get up to 90 days. Uh, what are individual nursing homes doing to acquire and stockpile PPE, and are gowns still the hardest item to get? Uh, securing PPE really is a daily activity for Connecticut nursing facilities, and there's been a flurry of activity to secure and stockpile as much PPE as possible, even beyond, you know, the several weeks that are currently recommended. We, we, we need to be much more prepared in terms of PPE, but we can't be responsible for solving uh, PPE issues, PPE uh, access issues that are ca caused by interruptions in the supply chain. And yes, you're absolutely right. Gowns has continued to be a problem but much more so the uh, sought after N95 masks that, uh, that are recommended by the CCC, CCC, CDC are not in, ready, uh, in, in easy supply and uh, Connecticut nursing homes continue to complain that they can't get access to uh, N95s. And there's a great concern that as the virus uh, resurges and spreads across the South and into the Southwest, that we're gonna see the consequences of uh, uh, the supply chain being further interrupted. So uh, I think we're doing everything we can. I think we, and I think our partners in Connecticut state go government have been very helpful in that regard, but we're, much more work needs to be done. And we need federal support to help with this as well. Uh, we need a, a, a federal answer to assure that Connecticut nursing facilities will have the PPE to address any issues that uh, uh, arise in a potential fall resurgence of the virus. All right, uh, Matt Barrett of the Connecticut Association of Healthcare Facilities. Matt, it's always great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on The Real Story. Thank you so much, Matt. Good to talk to you as well. All right, and thank you for joining us on the, this edition of The Real Story. We will see you next weekend, and be sure to tune into the Fox 60 News tonight. And